Well, good evening, folks, and welcome once again as we continue this journey through the sanctuary message. Let's bow our heads before we begin. Father in heaven, Lord, I ask that you would be with each one of us. I ask that you would just bless us as we spend this time together in your word. And I ask uh, that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct in everything that is said and that is heard this evening. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Starting where we left off yesterday, uh, we will begin here on page 55, just in case you have the little book and you are following along. The heavenly temple, the abiding place of the King of Kings, where thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him, Daniel 7, verse 10, that temple filled with the glory of the eternal throne, where seraphim its shining guardians veil their faces in adoration. No earthly structure could represent its vastness and its glory. Yet important truths concerning the heavenly sanctuary and the great work there carried forward for man's redemption were to be taught by earthly sanctuary and its services. So we are actually being let into a little window of heaven and understanding the heavenly things by this earthly sanctuary. It's wonderful how God works these things for us to better understand all of the plan of salvation and what he is doing for us. After his ascension, our Savior was to begin his work as our high priest. Paul says, Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, Hebrews 9, 24. As Christ's ministration was to consist of two great divisions, each occupying a period of time and having a distinctive place in the heavenly sanctuary, so the typical ministration consisted of two divisions, the daily and the yearly service. And to each department of the tabernacle, was devoted, and to each a department of the tabernacle was devoted, as Christ at his ascension appeared in the presence of God to plead his blood in behalf of penitent believers, so the priests in the daily ministration sprinkled the blood of the sacrifice in the holy place in the sinner's behalf. The blood of Christ, while it was to release the repentant sinner from the condemnation of the law, was not to cancel the sin. It would stand on record in the sanctuary until the final atonement. So in the type, uh, the blood of the sin offering was removed, the, the sin offering removed the sin from the penitent, but it rested in the sanctuary until the day of atonement. In the great and final award, the dead are to be judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works, Revelation 20, verse 12. Then by virtue of the atoning blood of Christ, the sin of all the truly penitent will be blotted out from the book in heaven. Thus, the sanctuary will be freed or cleansed from the record of sin. In the type of this work of atonement or blotting out of sins was represented by the services of the day of atonement. The cleansing of the earthly sanctuary, which was accomplished by the removal of the virtue of the blood of the sin offering of the sins by which had been, it had been polluted. As in the final atonement, the sins of the truly penitent are to be blotted from the records in heaven, no more to be remembered or come to mind. So in the type, they were born away into the wilderness forever separated from the congregation. So you can see how the earthly and the heavenly work so well together to teach you and I the important lessons and truths of our sin and our forgiveness. And I like the idea that they are blotted out never to be remembered as long as we have surrendered them, we have turned away from them, and we are behaving differently, uh, and we are repenting uh, and continually growing closer and closer to Jesus each and every day uh, so that the things we do tomorrow are not the things we did today and so on, as long as we're moving towards our Heavenly Father on a daily basis by spending time in His Word, by spending time in prayer, and by thinking on heavenly things and not of the things of this earth, then we can know that in the judgment we will be deemed worthy. 
Since Satan is the originator of sin, the direct instigator of all sins that cause the death of the Son, justice demands that Satan shall suffer the final punishment. Christ's work for the redemption of men and the purification of the universe from sin will be closed by the removal of sin from the heavenly sanctuary and by placing those sins upon Satan who will bear the final penalty. So the typical service, the yearly round of ministration, closed with the purification of the sanctuary and the confessing of the sins on the head of the scapegoat. Thus, in the ministration of the tabernacle and of the temple that afterwards took its place, the people were taught each day the great truths relative to Christ's death and ministration. And once a year, their minds were carried forward to the closing events of the great controversy between Christ and Satan, the final purification of the universe from sin and from sinners. So I hope you can see as we're studying this and as we've been told, as the Bible tells us, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, uh, we can see the beautiful correlation, uh, direct correlation between what is going on in heaven just now and what that service here on earth for the Israelites typified. Uh, I hope that uh, gives us hope and understanding that one day we can be called righteous forever and live with our Heavenly Father for an eternity. What a wonderful thing it is, and what a wonderful way God has used the sanctuary and its message to teach each one of us the important truths that lead to our salvation. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we ask that you will be with us this evening and bless us. We thank you for this time that we can spend together, and we ask that you will just continue to lead and guide and direct in our lives, and that you will draw us closer to you each and every day. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, have a wonderful evening. We'll see you again tomorrow night. And don't forget, tomorrow evening, prayer meeting starts again. So you might want to take part in that as well uh, on Zoom back to our prayer meeting. So uh, once again, we'll see you tomorrow night.